welcome to the first edition of Inside North Attleboro Schools. I'm Susan Cullen, the superintendent of schools, and we are here in the high school teacher's room to do our first show, which is going to be focusing on a hot topic that's actually hitting our schools. I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Scott Holcomb, who's our high school principal, and Mr. Kyle Cummer, who's our director of facilities. We're going to be talking to everyone out there today about the Science Lab Initiative. ask these two gentlemen to join me today so that we could inform people at home as to what this means for our district, how we got involved in this wonderful opportunity, and to take a tour at the end of the show of the facility so that you can see what our students are working in and how our teachers are teaching our students and how we need some help in making sure that the facilities are up to par to really bring us to our next level of good to great in the town of North Attleboro. So, as the facilities director, Mr. Cummer, you've been involved with projects that deal with the MSBA. Could you talk a little bit about what the MSBA is? Certainly. The MSBA is the Massachusetts School Building Authority. It's an organization based at the State House uh, that works with school departments to help them with their facility needs from green repairs, windows, doors, roofs, as well as this new initiative, uh, the Science Lab Initiative. Uh, these projects are all accelerated repair projects, so it, it, it actually moves very quickly. Uh, the MSBA also affords the town of North Attleboro a 52.06 reimbursement. So let me ask you a question, Mr. Cummer. So if a project was to cost $6 million, like this project is, we're saying we would not e exceed, are you saying that 52% of that would be reimbursed by an outside organization, the MSBA? That's correct. We would ac actually pay 48 cents on the dollar for this project. Uh, right now we're looking at a, at a project with the scope of this project, the budget of this project, right under the $6 million number. Um, this project has, has uh, increased in size, although, again, we were looking at approximately $3 million, uh, actually under $3 million for this project. What an opportunity. Let's talk a little bit about that. Mr. Holcomb, as the high school principal and actually uh, the, the person that put in a lot of work this summer to write up the educational plan that we submitted to the MSBA, can you talk a little bit about what you see and you envision as the changes that would be an opportunity for us here at the high school? Sure. Uh, first thing people want to know about before and they've been asking questions about was where the projects start from. Well, we had a lot of, of federal improvement projects and state improvement projects that came offline which uh, compiled to a $62 million grant opportunity that the Massachusetts School Building Authority came forward with and they called the Science Lab Initiative. Uh, Superintendent Cullen brought it to all of our attention and she said, will this be a good opportunity for our district to take part in? So working together as a team, uh, you know, the school, the town, and people within the town said, yes, it's going to be a good thing to apply for the grant. And we're a, one of nine districts to be afforded uh, a piece of the grant at the reimbursement rate that Mr. Cummer had mentioned. Now, for our school, initially, we didn't realize the, the magnitude of it and how wonderful this grant opportunity actually was. We thought we could actually shoehorn the science lab into the area that we currently had. And then what we realized was that the physical plant itself, the current science lab area, didn't fit the needs for this grant. We actually had to expand it after Kiesel Booz came in and did the feasibility study. We realized that because we have to expand because of the grant um, in Kiesel Booz, that it's going to take a few of our classrooms, uh, math classrooms, and relocate them out of the uh, science lab uh, area. We're going to actually increase the square footage of our classrooms here, put them all together in one generalized area from the front of the school to the back of the school to about 1,200 to 1,400 square feet. We realize that's going to decrease the likelihood of any kind of injuries to students, increase the opportunities to not just have the curriculum being taught, but a lot of more hands-on activities. Every room is going to be uniform and in, in, uh, in, in shape for the most part. It's going to have all the equipment being the same. So now we're not going to just say that that room is designated only for biology. That room is only designated for anatomy and physiology. It gives the principal and school system the opportunity to kind of shuffle the deck a little bit. Uh, and, and kind of expand the programs that we have here at the at the school. So what you're saying is that the it's called a science lab initiative mm -hmm. and originally to redo the science labs because we had to expand those spaces we had to go into some other classrooms this actually is becoming a much bigger project instead of just a science lab renovation you're actually we actually have an opportunity to renovate other classrooms that will also get that 52 percent reimbursement. 
That's what you're talking about. It's about a third yeah. of the high school could actually have some renovated classrooms. Is that correct? That's correct. You know, mm -hmm. we say sometimes that bigger isn't always better, but in this case, bigger is better. Um, we get to have other classrooms being renovated that haven't been touched since the uh, early 70s when the building was built. The top piece here is the second floor of the school and what we see is uh, two areas in one. Really it's all the science lab initiative, the renovations, but it is coupled with the current math area and the current science area. You can see that it would stretch from the front of the school all the way to the back of the school taking up the in entire side of the school, about, uh, I'd say, one-third possibly floor space of upstairs for that renovation. It takes the classrooms that used to be math classrooms and displaces them and puts them down on the main floor. Down on the main floor, or the first floor of the school, what we can see is, again, these highlighted areas are all the areas one, two, three that will be touched. Seven rooms being built here for math rooms. One, two, three rooms over here that will probably become math rooms right now. Another room here that is a, the form of foods room, which will get renovated and uh, put into a, a resource room for our students. Uh, and in this area, too, we're going to move a video studio across the way and make a new video studio there so that the math wing can be all together here in those seven rooms. You know, a multi-level project. It's on the main floor the, uh, downstairs. And it's on the second floor upstairs where the bulk of the work will take place. And uh, as I look at the, the price tag for it and I look at all the things we're getting for the amount of money, I think it's, it's a great bang for the buck. It's really to help bolster the school. It's really to help bolster the town. We've got NEAS coming in um, in 2014 for accreditation that happens every 10 years. The town has put, uh, you know, the science lab renovations as part of the capital improvements project for at least a decade that I know of, acknowledging the fact that we need to improve our physical plant and when NEAS comes in, part of what they look at as one of their standards is, does the physical plant meet the needs of today's learner and tomorrow's learner? And the idea is right now, I mean, one could argue that, hey, you've wanted to be improved for the past 10 years, you've acknowledged it on the CIP. Uh, if they come in and put us on probation, NEASC, we have to come up with fixing these labs, and it could come at the tune of a dollar for a dollar. And we, lo we lose the chance of this, uh, this grant, and we go to the bottom of the barrel, so to speak, with the MSBA, and now we've got to flip the bill for the whole thing. So this is an, an, an unbelievable opportunity, one that, that we I know in the town of North Attleboro that there's a been a focus for science for many, many years. Uh, I will tell you from the beginning of the process, one of the reasons that North Attleboro was chosen to participate in this grant is the commitment that we have to science, that we've had for science and mathematics, all of our academic um, subject areas. But if we didn't have such a commitment to science, we would not have been a school that was chosen to participate in, in, in this project. Can you talk a little bit about how we focus on science here and what our scores happen to be like here if we were to look at just test scores and one Sure, option? sure. Um, one, I remember <clears throat> years ago looking on the outside, looking in, we used to be noted for our, our science fair projects, mm -hmm. you know, at the state level. And when I came here as a principal <clears throat> two years ago, uh, what we found out was that not only were we great in the science fair category, but science as a whole. And uh, if we look at our MCAS scores as one uh, measuring stick, so to speak, of how well we're doing, we were just uh, put into Boston Magazine last year as one of the, uh, I think, the number one high school uh, in Massachusetts. We're tied with two other schools of having the highest overall MCAS scores in the area of science. And we were voted to be the most likely school to have a Nobel Prize winner come out uh, for, for science. So uh, that's just one area. Mm -hmm. If you uh, talk to students uh, that are graduating from here, some of our top graduates, I mean, one could argue that, well, maybe it just uh, is, is coincidence that it happens. But many of the students that we've seen, that we've taken out before who are our top graduates, they go on to medical school. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. want to major in science. Mm -hmm. and I think that's being instilled by some of the classes they take here with our teachers, a reflection mm -hmm. of that. And uh, we're just doing a great job with, with science. We have it uh, high up, but we also have all the all the subjects, the uh, high also. So, so one could think that if we do really well with science right now, and you're going to get a chance, folks, to do a tour with us to see what the science labs look like. And what, but once you see that and you know that we've had some wonderful scores, well, what would happen? What do you think might happen if we were to renovate these labs? What, what would your prediction be on how we'd perform in science or how children would learn? Yeah. Well, one, th one thing I think about, too, with the science lab renovation is I'm going to hold off on the prediction of, you know, standardized test achievement, but mm -hmm. one thing we want to do is years ago the school used to have the industrial arts here. We used to have 
woodshop, we used to have auto body, and those students who took, say, woodshop and auto body would graduate from here, they'd go into the working field, and they would see the exact equipment being used at North Attleboro High School being used in the field. Right now I've heard stories coming back from students who attend college that some of the things that you're exposed to freshman year in college mm -hmm. don't emulate and mimic what we're exposed to students mm -hmm. to here. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to think that with this renovation project, we know with this renovation project that the equipment and the facility that we get in will mimic the areas of higher education, post-secondary institutes, and also the workforce. So we want to give the kids a, a, f a fading chance to, as they go into the workforce or go into the college, to be ready for this whole thing by experiencing things here and then seeing the connection when they go into the college level. Again, we do very well when they leave here, mm -hmm. but the problem is mm -hmm. there's that growth curve that occurs. It's mm -hmm. a, a larger dip compared to other, other students who've been exposed to this stuff. With this grant opportunity, there are, we get 52% reimbursement. What would that include? I mean, if we renovate rooms, would we also have materials? Would we also have uh, furniture? That's correct. Uh, with this 52% reimbursement, there's, there's multiple things mm -hmm. that, we're gonna, that we're able to receive. To start with, uh, the MBC, the Municipal Building Committee, has started a program of, of upgrading the fire alarms to the North Atterbury mm -hmm. School Department. Mm -hmm. With this grant, they will be able to upgrade the entire fire alarm system for the North Atterbury High School. Originally, we were planning on just doing the 12 science labs, but with a meeting, uh, at a meeting up with the MSB up in Boston, they've decided that they'd like to reimburse up 100% of the fire alarm system. Mm -hmm. The next piece that they would reimburse is not only the construction of the building, with the mm -hmm the uh, HVAC, the heating and air conditioning systems, the electrical and plumbing systems, but also what they call FF&E. FF&E would be furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Mm -hmm. So that furniture, so when, when we look at these labs now, when you take the tour, you'll see that we have a lot of our equipment in, in, in cabinets, on, on tabletops. This, this will allow us to, to put casement work around three, three walls of these science labs. It will, it will allow that staff, the teaching staff, to supply all of their equipment and their needs in, within the classrooms. Mm -hmm. Not only will it include furniture for these classrooms, but it will also furnish the technology, uh, smart boards for every classroom. And not only the science labs, but also the displaced rooms mm -hmm. from the math department. So when we re relocate eight or nine math classrooms within the building, those rooms as well will be updated not only with the construction, furniture, but also the technology piece. What a wonderful opportunity. And that's, that's important, I think, for folks at home to understand. Um, this goes way beyond just science, and it goes way beyond just the building structure itself. This FF&E is important to know that we can also get that 52% reimbursement for. I want to shift a little bit here, guys. I know, I know, as working side by side with both of you um, this summer, it's been a lot of work. It's been a tremendous project. Let's talk about that first meeting that we had, that, that, it, that we invited the fire department, we invited the Board of um, Health, yep. we invited the town administrator. That's correct. Okay. This project yep. is, is a little different than the most of your green repair projects right. where it's doing those or doors. This is an educational-based project. Right. And this brings in the educational piece mm -hmm. with, with special needs and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the DSE. And then from there, we did a maintenance tool. Mm -hmm. And from there, we did a, 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 uh, mm -hmm. a, a budgetary survey. And then it got into the Department of Ed. And that's where Scott came in on his vacation and worked diligently through his Blackberry for me for a few days. And I don't know how he pulled it off, but he did a great job. Scott, maybe you could talk about the, about the educational piece, <coughs> which, which is a big impact for this project. Well, one thing I think the town needs to know is that uh, it was no one faction that did this. It was the whole town that did it. I remember talking to some of the parents they came to visit, um, I think it was this past Monday, uh, for the Parent Advisory Council. And to my surprise and my delight, uh, we had members of FinCom there, mm -hmm. Board of Selectmen there, school committee members there, parents there, teachers there. The whole town showed up because there's a lot of buzz and a lot of excitement in the air about working together to make this thing happen. I think as a whole town, my living in town myself, and you living in town, and, and you pretty much live in town because you're here so often, I think the tenor of the town is, is that they want this to happen as a whole town and they're excited about it. It's going to help our town out, it's going to bolster our town, uh, and it's in dire straits in the, in the science department. But what was nice was the ability for so many people to come to the table 
in, in such a short, accelerated rate that this thing happened in that people were willing to just chip in and get the job done. Uh, and I was on vacation, I was in Myrtle Beach, I remember that, and he had called me up, and it wasn't just me. It was people from town, it was Julie Hoyle, it was teachers that on their vacation time mm -hmm. came forward to get this thing done because this accelerated rate we've been told, what normally happens over multiple years, we're doing in a very short amount of time, but it's, it's, we were called the poster child of the uh, Massachusetts School Building Authority, not because of any one of us, but as a whole town all working together. That, that's so that's, that, that's correct. They, you know, with the, as Sue said at the beginning here, with the total involvement of the building department, mm -hmm. the fire department, the police department, the town accountant, the town <coughs> treasurer, all of those folks, the town clerk, all of us working together mm -hmm. to, to finalize these deliverables, I'll mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. uh, where, where you needed sign off from the town, administra I mean, uh, town administrator, mm -hmm. the chairman of the board of selectmen, the chairman of the school committee. Mm -hmm. Everything needs to be signed, everything needs to be stamped, everything needs to be certified. And they were just amazed how we could pull this off and, and, and the, inter, the, the cooperation and interaction between municipal and school departments, mm -hmm. they were just amazed how quickly and how efficiently we, we were able to do this. And, and we they were, being the MSBA, and correct. The, which is an outside entity looking in on North Attleboro and saying, wow, um, which we are so appreciative of. Um, you know, there are a couple of votes that are going to be coming up. We have a huge meeting on October 15th, which is with the RTM. Um, folks and that we're hoping that their their approval of this of this project will happen um, we're hoping a slam dunk we hope that we have opportunity to educate people on what it's about this show today is is the one of the purposes for this is to have provide an opportunity for folks to learn a little bit more about the project to actually see it in a virtual tour you know a, a big project I want people to see what they're voting on before they go and vote I want to offer them that opportunity I think it's Warren article um, 15 um, that they'll be voting for a uh, two-thirds uh, vote for that. Last June, uh, the town appropriated a half a million dollars for a feasibility study for this project. When we first started this idea, you know, we were really looking uh -huh. at approximately 17,000 uh, square feet of space. Mm -hmm. But as, as Scott has mentioned, this has expanded with a fire alarm mm -hmm. and taken over the math classrooms. So when we originally planned on this project, we were thinking, say 500,000 to do a feasibility study because we didn't know what we were going to get. We didn't know all about the FF&Es and, mm -hmm. and all of those things. We appropriated to borrow up to 500,000. That actually came in at 183,900 and change. And change. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so, so $184,000 will be appropriated for that. Um, so again, we're not going to be borrowing the rest of that 500000 mm -hmm. and that feasibility study is also reimbursable for by 52%. Which mm -hmm. is a wonderful opportunity for us. So that's important for folks to know that our mission always is to try to utilize the funding in the most efficient way possible. That's and that's an example of that. That's correct. You know, the town appropriated that feasibility study at 500000 We were cognizant of that, very appreciative of that, but we also came in significantly under when when you started to roll that out. Uh, exactly. So we we went asking for 500, we're going to be spending $90,000 yep. per se. It's wonderful. This is a very good time for us to take a virtual tour of what the science labs actually look like. And I hope that folks will um, understand the significant need that we have for this project. And as we move forward, we'll support it. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Holcomb to sort of give a guided tour of the rooms. Uh, and I hope that folks stay tuned because keep with us. We're going to go for a virtual tour of our science labs. Thank you. This first room we're in right here is a uh, biology room. What I want you to notice in the biology room is that uh, the setup of it. Normally biology, sometimes we have things called wet labs, and wet labs are things that use water, faucets, and as we look around the room, I want you to notice that as I, as I scan the room really quickly, I don't see any uh, water in this room right now to do a, a biology lab with, which may require our teachers to flip-flop rooms and to change rooms when uh, one's not doing a lab and one is, we can change rooms to utilize some of the equipment, it's not optimal. Uh, the tables in here, just pay attention to the layout of the room because as I bring it to the other biology rooms, what you're going to notice is a stark difference with the inequalities that exist in the room. Last room we were in was a biology room, now we're in another biology room right here. Uh, you can tell by the setup of the room, we talked about biology being a wet lab, a lab that requires water, possibly the use of natural gas. As you look around the room, you can see one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plus a teacher one, eleven stations 
that we can do wet labs at, whereas the other room we just left, which is a biology room also, you saw zero ability to use the, uh, the wet lab. So if we want to do what's called a guaranteed and viable curriculum, where kids have access to all the same equipment and same opportunities, what we have right now is we have to, if we're going to do that, we have to flip-flop rooms during lab periods if we do that at all. Uh, the science lab initiative that we're involved in right now, if you look at the floor space, the MSBA, Massachusetts School Building Authority, says that for each child we need approximately 60 square feet of area around the child. Now, if you can just imagine an eight foot by eight foot box around me, and what we found out was that if we have about 24 kids per room, the MSBA is saying you should have around 1,250 to 1,400 square linear feet within a room. This room right now, as you look at it, I'm going to rough estimate it, maybe, maybe uh, 900 square feet, linear feet in this room, maybe 1,000 tops. So you can see the, the scope of the project would require each science room, which would be 12 in total, to be much bigger uh, than this current room that we're in right now. This room right here that we're in is a chemistry room. You can see the setup of this room differs from the biology rooms where the classroom lecture area up front with the seats. We have about 24 students in this classroom here and as they get up and we talk about increasing the amount of space in a room, the um, DESE, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, along with the MSBA, agrees with that 60 square feet per kid, you know, minus a little bit. There is some wiggle room there. And as we look around this lab, you can just imagine 24 students uh, kind of working at these lab stations right here and as I walk down this aisle I think I have a clearance maybe a three foot clearance left to right here as we have Bunsen burners going and chemicals going you know what they believe is if we decrease the square footage the probability of student injury increases in proportion to the decreased uh, you know square footage so they want to do it around that 60 square feet for that uh, the labs would be this room right here almost twice the size of this room that we're in We've got homemade uh, whiteboards up front that teachers have brought in on their own and spent their own money on to install these things. They install those on their own time over the blackboards. Uh, again, buying the materials at Home Depot, Lowe's, stores like that to, uh, to make their rooms work for themselves with the dry erase markers. Next over here, we have a sister room to the one we were just in, another chemistry room. Again, up front, you can actually see the whiteboard that the teacher has installed. You can see the, the storage cabinets. Those are used to store sometimes you know, organics for chemicals, glassware and whatnot. Uh, part of the science lab renovation project would be to outfit the entire place with uh, you know, FF and E, uh, they call it, furnitures, fixtures and equipment. And that includes all new cabinetry and hardware throughout the rooms, new electronics. Part of the renovation project includes updating all of the uh, equipment in the rooms along with um, you know, the renovation of the rooms itself, increasing the square footage. This area right here is the chemical storage area that we have uh, as a central chemical storage area that we've retrofitted and outfitted with the appropriate uh, ventilation for the acids, which sometimes fume, for the flammables. Part of the renovation project, though, would be to be to build a state-of-the-art facility which has all appropriate ventilated uh, equipment in here to uh, store things and separate chemicals out with a much larger area to, uh, to work. We've got uh, you know, a fume hood over here that's uh, operational where teachers can you know, uh, prepare their acids and you know, weaken the acids up. And uh, each room would actually have a fume hood so that students could do their experiments in the fume hoods along with teachers doing prep work uh, within the fume hoods. This room we're in right here is the anatomy and physiology room. The uh, physical layout of this room is somewhere between six to 700 square, square foot room. So you can imagine the new rooms being double the size of this room right here. Again, the same problems we see is it's, it's uh, functionality. You can't just take a biology class and throw it in here again because if you wanted to toggle between different disciplines, it would be very difficult to do again because you only have one setup for the teacher up front to have the ability to wash things off. Anatomy and physiology does require the dissection of uh, sometimes a fetal pig. Uh, different types of uh, animals that have been preserved will be dissected in here and the use of water you know we have to make it work we go in the back prep rooms we use other rooms to to wash these things off and prepare it and then we bring it in here have it set up for the students to use so it's uh, not what you call optimal or conducive to the optimizing learning for the children but uh, you know the students and teachers here they make it work for them another room we're in right now is the uh, earth science room or environmental science room right here and as you can see this room is more of an open classroom um, 
Behind me to my left is an egress to the hallway, but that's used by other students if they want to use the pass and go to the bathroom, they'll be walking by that room. So if you're a student sitting here, you'll be looking up, looking at people exit into the hallway, which you know I think four classrooms funnel out that way. Uh, to my right, there's been some boxes and some buckets from looks like probably preserved specimens that were in those five gallon buckets at some point. Those have been put up because it's an open classroom. There's other students on the other side of that that are using the lab areas. So to minimize distraction, we've put up some, some boxes and buckets to, uh, to allow the students to say focus on what happens inside the classroom. Uh, Mr. Covers over there, you can see him moving the, the boxes right here. And how easy if he walked by, a student sitting in this area right here would, uh, would be distracted by him and not be able to stay focused on the learning that's supposed to be taking place in the, uh, in the classroom. Never mind the noise level. Uh, as the other classes are going on, since it's an open classroom format, the noise level increases and sometimes it's a snowball effect. Uh, you want to talk to your partner, there's a lot of noise around you, so we start to increase the noise of ourselves. Then the people next to us start to increase the noise. Next thing you know, what was starting off with a mild, you know, inside voice goes up to a roar because we're all talking over each other. About academics, but the problem is, it's still very loud. All right, this is one of the uh, areas that is used by students also to do labs. It's got a fume hood, which uh, right now is being used to house microscopes in it, so you can tell that we're not utilizing a fume hood. That may be for a multitude of different reasons. Uh, it's very busy in the area here. Again, too, it gives us a chance in the new science lab to cull through all the, all the materials that we have, organize ourselves nice and neat to optimize the students' experience here uh, within this area. The tables themselves, you know, they're starting to peel up. You know, they're supposed to be chemically resistant tables as I look at them. And I can see now that the outer shell on the chemical resistant tables has bubbled up for some reason, which is leaving the particle board underneath exposed, which may kind of absorb some of the, uh, you know, chemicals that may accidentally spill on the table. So again, part of the whole science lab renovation is to upgrade the entire facility, including tables that have chemical resistance tops that are solid, I believe, all the way through, obviously preventing any kind of particle board from absorbing any type of uh, chemical into, into itself. We're standing inside of another anatomy and physiology room right here. It's a, a sister room to the one that we saw before. And uh, again, the only difference in this room, it's about 600 square feet. But what we'll look at it is it does have one additional uh, wet lab setup, which is just a, kind of a single floor mount area, probably about a two and a half foot by two and a half foot, um, four foot tall podium for a, for a wet lab. Again, still running into the problems of, um, you know, when we deal with dissections and having to clean things off and to prep uh, our animals before dissection that we use, our preserved animals. You know, where does it take place? Where do we clean up all of our utensils? Where do we clean off the dissection trays? Again, it, it probably would be very difficult to do within the room here. We look at the technology here. Some of our rooms, it's tough to see up here because the chairs are up, but we have, you know, a pull down a projector screen with a LCD projector here. Uh, not the surface mount smart boards that will be part of the science lab initiative that we have. And uh, again, too, it just makes it a lot easier. It takes up less floor space from the, from the ceiling, and it just clears up the area for students when they're working, minimizing distractions minimizing possible accidents that, that may occur within the lab area. All right, you're standing inside of another biology room here. We've seen two biology rooms already, and yet again, the third one that we're looking at right now doesn't even have the same floor setup that we've seen before. The last biology room I took you into had, uh, I think, 10 or 11 wet lab stations. This one here has uh, three to my right, three to my left, which for a total of six, plus a teacher, one for seven. This is where, uh, uh, a, uh, what is it, uh, AP Biology is being taught in this room here, and yet again you see the disparity. One room had zero wet labs, another room has 10 or 11, this room has six, and it suits the needs of the teachers that have been here because they've learned to adapt to the situation like a good scientist should, but uh, we've had to make some strange changes to the whole building. Strange meaning, you know, this was an open kind of a campus before, and uh, if we look uh, above my head here, you can see that we've got some technology yet mounted on the ceiling, which is great, minimizing, taking up more floor space. But you can see here we've got the air handler that had to be mounted, uh, you know, within the ceiling because of when we put up the walls, the air circulation and flow had changed, so this had to be retrofitted and put in. You can see behind me the use of a, uh, a, a blackboard, chalkboard versus the, the whiteboards. So again, just if we look at the, the setup itself, it's a lot different. 
we can see that the cabinetry in here, um, what I consider to be is, I look at these things as being a former science teacher as minimal at, at, at best. You know, as you're building a kitchen, one can always argue you can never have enough cabinetry, never have enough cabinet space. You always have a place that you need to put something. So you look around and look at the, the, the casement or the work in this room, you know, the new labs are going to have, you know, tables uh, all along the skirt outside of the room here, you know, to do lab work. The plumbing and piping, everything is going to be on the skirt and outside of the room, opening up this entire floor space so students can do more work if they want to move tables away, get down and do experiments if they need to on the floor, or move tables over the side to experiments over here. But if you can imagine cabinets beneath the countertops and, you know, more cabinets above the countertops you can find in the kitchen, which would span a good portion uh, of the room. We had to work within the physical plant that we have. So not every room will be identical in size. They may fluctuate from 1,200 to 1,400 square feet, but that room right there pretty much has the same format and setup, where a big wide open area for students in the middle, and a lot of the lab tables and everything, all the lab tables on the skirt of the, of the classroom with cabinetry above and below. Um, all new uh, electronics within each classroom, the plumbing, the electrical, the cabinetry, the countertops, um, the computers, the technology, uh, glassware, uh, spec 20s, different equipment is going to come with this that's necessary to teach students for the 21st century. We're in another biology room here. This is the fourth biology room that we're visiting. You can tell this is probably the smallest of uh, the biology rooms we've seen so far. Yet again, I see up on the board the and I know that Ms. Harrison put these in herself. She asked when she was hired last year if she could do it. Her and her husband came in and of their own uh, time, of their own money, put up these white boards they had bought over at Home Depot over the black boards uh, on both sides of the room. You can see that there's only, I don't even see a wet area here in front for the table. Behind me there's one wet lab area up over there. Um, computer in the corner, very small area to do biology in. Yet if we want to create kind of equity in education, we say, yeah, we have it for the curricular experience, what's being taught, but if I look at the physical plant experience, the physical plant itself isn't the same for each child. So if you look at the classrooms, you see to yourself, well, what classroom do I want my kid to be in? Well, as I went to one room, I looked around and saw all these wonderful lab tables set up. I'm like, huh, if I want the best for my kid, maybe I want to fight and try to get my student into that lab class because it seems to have a better physical facility, more chances to maybe be exposed to the labs and maybe students in a classroom like this. We're in our greenhouse right now, our hot house, so to speak. Uh, it's not being fully utilized right now because, number one, it's a kind of a chain-driven system that we have up here. And you can imagine with the weather turning, it's the fall of the year right now. If these windows aren't closed appropriately, any kind of plants that you have in here would get frostbit. The temperature needs to remain constant. And uh, with the new renovation project, the windows would open and close automatically. This whole area would be gutted out and redone, actually being used to, uh, you know, promote plant growth and do different experiments with. Uh, so this room is a multi-purpose room. It's used to do chemistry, physics, earth science, and we were just fumbling around trying to find the lights. And because we thought the lights would be on the inside of the classroom, like almost all the other classrooms in the science wing, we just found out they're not. They're on the outside of the classroom in the hallway where students are going in and out from other classes, they've just walked by, they could actually turn the lights up if they wanted to. We have the situation going on where we've got lab tables, one, two, three water stations here of different heights, right in the way of if I want to give a lecture behind me, and then we have to figure out how to do a lab to utilize these here, and we're going to be picking these tables up and moving them with chairs, and the square footage might be around 600 square feet. Again, seriously undersized for today's learner in science. And uh, definitely, you can see the whiteboard right here, homemade whiteboard. This right here is what happens to these boards if you buy them over at Home Depot or Lowe's. Within a few years, after cleaning them, they, they absorb the ink and they don't go clear anymore. And now it's gray instead of being a whiteboard. Initially, we thought the science lab renovations would just occur within the physical facility that I just showed you here in the current science lab where they exist. But we found out that looking at the square footage requirements that set forth through the uh, Department of Education and MSBA, that we couldn't just do it within the, the physical facility that now houses science, and we had to expand. We found out that, we said, okay, well, this grant cover us to actually put on a new addition to the school. Maybe we need to expand the school out. They said, well, the grant doesn't do that. The grant only covers the physical plant that you have now and not expanding and adding on to your physical plant. So with that being said, we said, okay, what can we do to make this thing happen? 
Well, if we took these math rooms here to my left and relocated them, we'd have enough square footage to satisfy the requirements set forth by the Department of Education and MSBA to put it in this area right here. Uh, they were very uh, understanding of our, our, our building, saying that, yeah, we'd like to have 1,400 square feet per classroom, but we realize that you're limited with your physical structure. There's certain support beams that can't be moved. There's certain things that you just can't just decide to knock down because the building itself would ruin its instructional uh, integrity, integrity to the building. So uh, they said, we'll take these over, and you know what's going to happen? The MSBA said, we'll actually give you the reimbursement for any rooms we move out, and wherever we move them to, we'll redo those rooms also as part of the, the reimbursement. So we had those seven bathrooms going downstairs, so seven more rooms downstairs being redone, and a few more other rooms downstairs that are going to be redone with this, with this grant also. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tour. Uh, it is very informative, and I know that there are a lot of um, colors in the, these pictures that people are going to remember from back in the 70s when these labs were actually uh, first um, designed and put in. This wraps up the very first show of Inside North Attleboro Schools. I want to thank Mr. Holcomb for attending. I want to thank Mr. Cummer for being here today, for engaging in an open, honest dialogue, and I hope that the shows as we move forward in the future will also talk about the things that are impacting our schools and that you at home will have an opportunity to see what's inside North Attleboro Schools. Thank you.